Good morning, David. Hi, good morning, Sunny. Can all risk be avoided? And why it is sometimes necessary to take risks in business, in projects, and in life in general? Yes, it would be wonderful if all risks could be avoided. The first thing to say is we've been talking about some risks being good. Not all risks mm -hmm. are bad. And of course, we don't want to avoid good risks. That's really important to say. If we find opportunities, of course we don't want to avoid them. And when we talk uh, under risk management process about different response strategies, different responses to risk, uh, some of the responses for bad risks will be about avoiding them. But we, of course, don't want to avoid good risks, opportunities. We want to and capture to trap them, exactly, capture trap them and, 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 and exploit them. So um, we don't want to uh, avoid all risks. The question really is, do we want to avoid, avoid all bad risks? Or could we, should we be taking some risks, even that are bad, potentially? And I think we do need to take some risks in life uh, and in organizations and in projects and business. Why do I say that? Well, we know that risk is related to reward. So mm -hmm. if you play it safe, if you say, I'm only ever going to stay in my house, I'm never going to meet anybody new, I'm never going to look for a new job, I'm never going to make any friends. You isolate yourself. You're safe, you're completely safe, but then you have no experience, you have no life. Um, if you said as a business, we're going to stick to making the products that we make, we're not going to look for any innovation, we're not going to look for new products or new markets, we're just going to do what we do. And some companies have tried doing that, then very soon innovation will happen without you and you'll lose your business. And there are lots of examples of companies um, who have just stuck with their basic product. You might think in the camera industry of Kodak. Kodak, yes. And that's a, f mm. a very sort of famous example mm -hmm. where Kodak made film, uh, camera film. And then, did you know that Kodak invented the first digital camera? Yes. And then they said, that's not our business. You know, we don't want to do that. That's too risky. We'll just make better and better and better mm. film. And then suddenly the digital uh, camera Cameras, revolution yes. happened and Kodak lost their business. Um, so uh, there are lots of other examples. We need to take risk to step into new areas, to innovate, um, to be creative, to, to be entrepreneurial. Um, and this is very important. Of course, it could all go wrong. And that's why we need risk management. Yes. Um, so it is important that we take risks in order to gain rewards, gain benefits, and not just play it safe. And the question is, what is that level? And we have the issues, as you know, of risk mm -hmm. appetite and so on, which we'll talk about later on, of understanding what is our safe level of risk beyond which it's too risky. And for every organization, for every project, actually for each individual, the answer to that question, how much is too much, is different. And we need to know for ourselves and for our organizations where that limit is. But if we just play it safe, uh, uh, if we don't play at all, we won't win the game. So an example, for example, if somebody puts uh, an insurance, that is not avoiding risk. It's just moving the risk to somebody else who will be paying for it. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, it is. You are avoiding the cost of the risk. So, for example, mm -hmm. you might have um, uh, insurance that your car could be stolen. And if somebody steals your car, then the insurance company gives you money. And maybe they buy you a new car, but you've still lost your car. Definitely. You have a fire insurance on your house, and if the house burns down, they give you money, but you've lost your house and your photographs and all your possessions and your carpets and, and, and so on. So, um, you know, you can remove the financial impact, but you don't remove all of the impact. And we'll talk about that when we come to talk about risk responses. But um, it is important to recognize that sometimes you just have to take a chance and then manage it effectively. Um, so if we took no risk, well, life would be very boring for a start. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of us yes. like to take risk in our, in our leisure lives. You know, people um, go whitewater rafting or they go riding dune buggies in, in, in the desert or they go skydiving or they go deep sea diving. These are all very risky things to do. Of course. Uh, yes. but there's, uh, there's a reward, there's the adrenaline, there's the excitement, there's the thrill of doing something with somebody else. And the same is true in business.
so it, that means that if you want to be distinguished, if you want to be different, if you want to have an advantage, then you have to have these capabilities of not avoiding risk or taking a little bit of risk. Taking some risk, yes. Some risk. And the question is how much? Is it a little, is it a lot? It might feel like a lot, but everything we do, we learn through taking risk, either by taking risk and succeeding, and it, it was okay, and then we can maybe take a little more risk next time, or by taking risk and failing, and then we learn from that. You know. That failing is very, very important. Isn't it? Yes. And we should talk about that as well. Let, let's, let's talk about that later on. Yeah, thank you, David. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you.